Ďakujem, škaj. Ničan, skvačís. Tam skvačís ču. Čuši, kuk, tietiš, en tiwetá. Good day. I have given you three of my ancestral names. I am from Wuhuanik, Wuhuomuh, the Wuhuanik people, as well as our neighboring formal Shkatin. I'm going to share today of how I received my name. Imagine this though. Long time ago, our elders in that used to always watch the children grow up. They used to always take them out and go and harvest and do all the things that they figure that their gifts were. So on this story, I'm going to share with you of how I became Tsetish is like this. We're going, getting ready, all ready for school in that. And when we're getting ready for school, we have to, I, being the oldest out of eight children, at that time I was out of six children, we had to grab onto my brother, my little brother, Hudson. His name was Robert then. And I used to have to, pull them along the, the freeway, right on Lloyd Highway, and we go to the bus stop. So uh, during that time in that, I've always wondered why he always kept on pulling himself away. He didn't want to, he didn't want to go into, into school. He didn't want to go on the bus. And then we found out later why. But now we went through the day and that we got, we went to school and then we were coming back. Same thing happened, but this time it was all in fun. We're always racing. I was always racing. Shulaqua, my sister, Cindy, she was tall. She was like my height, but me with my ego, I was always like, oh, I got to beat her. To me, it was just fun and games. And that's how we became really fast runners. Then next thing you know, she was gone ahead of me in that and I stayed behind with my younger brother, being tiny. He must have been about six years old, grade one. And we're going up to the driveway. And in the driveway in that, when you just about go on top of the hill, there's this beautiful, beautiful tree with all the leaves on there. And I was admiring all that and then I stopped for a moment and I said, stop, brother, stop. And he's like, got this look on us. He's like, what's the matter? And I said, stop, just don't move. And he goes, why? And, and I says, look over there. And he's seen a family of deer. I says, I says, don't, don't, don't go run over there and scare them. And I have to hold him back. I held his hand and I said, don't. I said, shh. Next thing you know, he says, watch this. Watch this. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to go pet those deers. And he, and he looks at me. You know that kind of look when the curiosity got the best of the little one? He's looking at me like, is that going to happen? He says, okay. And then he says, well, then can I chase them after? Like, oh yeah, sure you can. So then I'm going, I slowly around, I go past these wild rose bushes that are around there, the tall grass that's around there. I'm feeling there and I'm coming right around the big tree. And I seen the great big mama deer. Those great big baddie eyes. Those lashes, you know how we always want some of those, us ladies. Those big, beautiful brown eyes like, you see mine, eh? <laughs> they beautiful? Yes, I think so. So, and I went and I grabbed my hand and I went towards that deer and I know you're looking at me. 
So I went close to the ear of the deer and I started softly petting the deer's head and ear. And I looked straight in my eye and I said to her, I said, I see you come over and visit us. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to share this moment and this time together. And it just looked at me and then I looked at the two fawns and I went slowly and I went over there with my hands and I just about petted one of them and then they just came up and they just sniffed my hand like so gentle and then I looked at them and I said thank you for sharing that moment with me on the, the land that we share and the next thing you know mama deer and baby deers the fawns start walking into the tall grass and then I looked at my brother and I said, see? And he goes, oh yeah, now can I? Can I? And I go, yes, you can. So he jumped up and he went trying to go run after the deer, but the deer were already gone into the grass. He didn't catch up to them because they were too fast. They disappeared in the grass. So did that only happen once? Well, I got to tell you this. No, it didn't. Another time in that, of course, always coming back from school, walking with one of my sisters this time. They walked with me in that. And then we're walking up the hill again there. And I said, stop right there. And they're looking at me again. The same thing happened. I said, look, you remember that story I told you that I got to pet the deer? And they're like, she's like, yeah, I go, look, they're right there. But mind you, this is a year after. This time it was a, a deer, a doe, and it's a one fawn. And I says, I bet you I can go and pet those deers again. And kind of looking at me, yeah, I don't know. So my little sister and that, I says, just watch this. I was thankful she was patient. I can't tell you which one of my sisters they are. They'll tell you in their own story when that time comes. So I went over there, did the same thing, feeling the top, tall grass, feeling the, the beautiful, ouch, I got pricked by that wild rose bush that was there again. But again, it didn't bother me. And then I went closer to the tree and I, seen that deer again and I says thank you for showing me your family I know you must be the sister to your sister I met last year and her two babies I see you came to introduce your little baby to me and beautiful brown eyes again oh I just love those eyelashes looking into their beautiful eyes brown eyes this time I got to go and reach out and I touched the nose gently. Then again, she looked at me and acknowledged me with those beautiful, big, floppy, long eyelashes. And I looked to the baby and then sure enough, I did the same thing. I didn't want to scare baby, I didn't want to scare the fawn. So I reached over and again, the fawn did the same thing. She looked at me, sniffed my hand, and then I looked to my sister and I said, see, I told you I could talk to deers. I could pet them. And she goes, oh, all right, okay. So she starts running, going, running into the, into the house. Sure enough, that's what happened. Did that happen the only time? Twice? I say not. What happened? Okay, believe it or not. Quinn now it's driving up in our blue van with the sliding doors. 
and I'm sitting up in front with her. This is our mom, Quinnawit. And then I told her, Mom, stop! She stopped. She's like, what's the matter? What? And I says, remember that story I told you I could, I could pet the deer? And she goes, yeah. I go, look, they're over there. This is my mom right here. And I says, I, I bet you I could go and I could go and pet those deers again. And she goes, hmm, okay. But I didn't want to scare the deer. I didn't go out in front and slam the door. I went in the back and I went through the sliding door and I did the same thing, feeling the tall grass and then coming across the beautiful wild rose bushes. And I came across, again, I acknowledged myself. This time I shared my Indian name. They always called me Chushi from Shkatin. Hi, I'm Chushi. And I talked to that deer again and I was able to reach over and touch in the cheek of her and I, and I says thank you for sharing your time with me and thank you for bringing your little one we shared the same amount of space the environment we live in together then I turned around and I looked at my mom and I said see I told you I can talk to deer and I can pet them and sure enough, she went driving up, she acknowledged, and then I'm all happy, so I'm going in, I'm going in to the, to our house, and then I go running into the living room, I was excited, dad wasn't around at that time, he was gone fishing, and then next thing you know, I see the great